Another Wednesday means another brand new episode. Thanks for tuning in this week for the Media Bites. This week on the show, we look back at the life of Michael Clark Duncan. There's an interesting and untrue Bruce Willis rumor making the rounds, and the Jersey Shore finally gets canceled. But first, we've got that hot, hot Hillary Duff news you guys have all been waiting for. Right? As it turns out, Hillary Duff has been named America's most royal celebrity, according to a study by FindMyPast.com, which says she is the U.S. star most closely related to Britain's Queen Elizabeth II. Duff's gateway ancestor, according to the site, is Alexander Spotswood, born in 1676, an officer in the British Army who became Lieutenant Governor of Virginia and was the 10th great-grandson to Edward III. Duff is also a descendant of Catherine Carr, a woman believed to be the illegitimate daughter of Henry VIII, so that's something, and is the Queen's 18th cousin. Duff beats out second place Brooke Shields, the Queen's 18th cousin once removed, and actor siblings Maggie and Jake Gyllenhaal, who are 19th cousins to the Queen. Sad news this week out of Hollywood. Michael Clark Duncan, the hulking, prolific character actor whose dozens of films included an Oscar-nominated performance as a death row inmate in the Green Mile, is dead at age 54. Duncan died Monday morning at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where he was being treated for a heart attack, according to his fiancée in a statement released by Duncan's publicist. The muscular, six-foot-four Duncan, a former bodyguard who turned to acting in his 30s, appeared in such films as Armageddon, Planet of the Apes, and Kung Fu Panda. He suffered a myocardial infarction on July 13th and never fully recovered. Sad stuff and an unfortunate excuse to rewatch The Green Mile this weekend. There's an interesting and unique rumor making the internet rounds this week. According to Britain's Daily Mail, actor Bruce Willis is considering legal action against Apple in a battle over who owns songs downloaded from iTunes. According to the British tabloid, the diehard star has discovered that like anyone who has bought music online, he does not actually own the tracks, but is instead borrowing them under a license. The problem with that, says the Daily Mail, is Willis allegedly wants to leave his digital music collection to his daughters, which he can't legally do as a borrower through the user agreement on iTunes. One problem here, Willis is not planning to fight Apple over his iTunes music collection, and the story turns out to be a rumor. But what about the truth behind it? User agreements and licensing in iTunes and other music and file download sites are increasingly complex. And just like social media sites that are having to deal with death and inheritance online, iTunes surely has come to the same problem. Rumor or not, maybe this is a job for John McClane to solve. MTV announced this week that the upcoming sixth season of Jersey Shore will thankfully be its last. The show premiered in December 2009 and has proven to be one of MTV's most popular shows ever. But recently, it has seen a steady drop in viewership over the last few seasons from a third season record-setting high of 8.8 .8 million viewers. So, MTV has made the decision to cancel it in order to market it as the last season, hoping that viewers who may have turned away will return to say goodbye. A special one-hour retrospective entitled Jim Tan Look Back will air later this week immediately ahead of the 2012 Video Music Awards. The final season itself will premiere October 4th. But remember folks, reality TV show or not, Snooki reproduced, and now she has a baby. Okay, serious question. Is VP candidate Paul Ryan a habitual liar? We know that all politicians lie in one form or another. See Bill Clinton or George W. Bush. But why does it seem Paul Ryan is so okay with lying? After weeks of brazen lying on everything from Medicare to his own marathon times, at what point should Americans, regardless of political party, worry about a politician who is willing to brazenly lie with seemingly little to no regard for any consequences? 
We've got a few great pieces up this week on how to navigate post-truth politics on our website, and now we want to hear from you at home. Should there be more significant consequences to Paul Ryan's lies in the media? Or are journalists doing their job highlighting Ryan's lies, or do they need to hold his feet closer to the fire in pursuit of the truth? Tell us using hashtag TMBTV on Twitter, and we'll post the best responses from this week up on our website. Finally this week, a few Facebook pages are about to get a lot less popular. The social network is cracking down on likes that come from spam bots and fake accounts. Concerned about the effect that these fraudulent recommendations may have on the accuracy of their data, Facebook is bringing down the hammer in an attempt to ensure that only actual people are liking things on their pages. Overly liked pages are a concern for the company because it calls into question the worth of their database of people and their tastes. Being that this is the one and only product Facebook and a number of other companies on the web has to sell advertisers, maintaining the integrity of that data is a big concern for Zuckerberg and company. If their data about what people like and dislike isn't reliable, the company quickly runs out of things to offer to its base of advertisers. All said and done though, the company has announced that they expect less than 1% of likes to be affected by this swing of spam fighting. And it's shameless plug time, you can make up for that by liking our Facebook page. Just get on there and search The Media Bites. That's it for The Media Bites this week. If you want to sound off on anything we covered on the show, just let us know. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter at The Media Bites. We'll be live Friday with another brand new podcast and a whole lot more that you can only get on TheMediaBites.com. Until then, hey, I'm Bobby DeMuro and I'm out of time. We'll see you guys next week.